to take the derivative of this function, the fact that I have a logarithm tells me I should first ask myself whether or not any logarithm rules for algebra would help us simplify this function in any way before crashing into the derivative. Um, as is, we have a product rule with a chain rule and another product rule, and that's an awful lot of rules to keep straight. And so uh, it sure would be nice if some algebra could help us clean this up a bit. And uh, it ends up that algebra does help us because we have the log base two of a product. And anytime we have the logarithm of a product, we could use algebra to split that product into the sum of the logarithms. And so we have f of x here is equal to the x squared that's out front. And I'm gonna need parentheses because I'm going to split up uh, what looks like just a single term right now, the log base two of the product into a sum of things. And so I need the parentheses. So here, using the logarithm algebra rule, we have the log base two of x plus, the product becomes plus, log base two of two to the x. And so now we're gonna continue using some algebra rules to help us out on cleaning up. So we've got f of x equals, we're still gonna hold the x squared out front with the parentheses. Log base two can't be for, um, of x can't be further cleaned up. But if we look at the next term here, we have log base two of the exponential base two raised to the x power. So the log base two and then the exponential base two, they undo each other. And so that really just leaves us with x for the um, second term in our sum. And so now uh, we could take the derivative. Uh, we still have a product rule at this point. Um, but we could go ahead and also um, distribute that x squared across so that at least we wouldn't have parentheses. So we'd have x squared times log base 2 of x plus x squared times x, which would be x cubed. So all of this, notice, just has f of x next to it. I have done nothing that ha involves the derivative yet, but I have prepared myself now to take the derivative. So this is just a copy of what we had from the previous slide. Um, we have f of x equals um, something, and this first term here is the product of two terms. And so we've got to make sure we still utilize the product rule there, but then um, the last thing we have to do is make sure that we don't forget the derivative of x cubed in the end there. So we're ready to take the derivative. We've got um, the derivative here, f prime of x is equal to, uh, let's see, we've got the product rule for the first term. So we'll have uh, the derivative of x squared times the log base two of x plus x squared times the derivative of log base two of x. So that's the product rule part, but then we need to add to it the derivative of x cubed. We wanna take the derivative all in one step here. So we are taking the derivative of x cubed there using our sum rule. And the derivative of x cubed is bring down the three and drop the power on the x by one, a simple power rule. So three x squared. So now to finish off the derivative, we just have these little derivatives within our product rule. And so we've got uh, the derivative of x squared, which is a simple power rule, so that would be a 2x, and then we have it multiplied by the log base 2 of x, plus we've got x squared, and then we've got to take the derivative of log base 2 of x. So the derivative of log base 2 of x, that's one of these base b problems, it has the extra factor on the bottom, natural log of the base, of the logarithm, so that would be natural log of two. And then uh, since it's a log of simply x, we've got the x that's the factor, and we don't need a chain rule, so we've just got the one on top. And then we add to it three x squared. So perhaps the one thing that I would recommend to clean this up a bit would be looking again at that second term. This two x log base two of x is pretty simplified, not anything you can do. However, we've got x squared times a fraction, and that fraction has x on the bottom. And so really a factor of x is on the top and the bottom, and so that would leave us with just a single factor of x that we could write on the top, and then we would just have the natural log of two on the bottom, um, because the x that's on the bottom canceled with one of the x's in the x squared. And then we have our final term, three x squared, which is written nicely to finish up our derivative.